Well, hello there, friends, and soon-to-be friends, and even non-friends who have unfortunately decided that I, for some odd reason that I'm an enemy that they need to watch. Praise God. Um, hello. I hope you all are having a wonderful evening. And so tonight, I am going to talk about... The title of this is going to be More Undignified Than This. Um, I saw a meme today, and I mean, I have a lot of people in my life, and I know that we all do, um, but let's just be real, okay? We have been programmed, and especially the generation ahead of us, has been really programmed to be afraid of emotions, and it's looked at as a strength to just be emotionless, to have, you know, like, you know, not to, not to be real or not to have emotions. This is one of the reasons I cannot stand small talk. Like, and honestly, I don't even like it when people ask me how I'm doing because most of the time they do not care. They just want to hear, good, how are you? And they'll say good back and it's ridiculous. And, uh, uh, I just, yeah, I, I, I'm honest with people. It like, don't ask me how I'm doing. If you don't really want to know, like, oh, <laughs> but anyway, it, it's something we are just automatically, it's been programmed into us that that is a strength when in actuality, it's a weakness. Now having self-control over your emotions is a strength. And that comes, you know, obviously by, I mean, you can work on it yourself, but that comes through the power of the Holy Ghost. Um, that's actually one of the fruits of the Spirit, as mentioned in Galatians 5, 22 through 23. So, um, yeah, but be having emotions and expressing emotions like joy expressing emotions like sorrow, being so comfortable in your own skin that you do not care what anybody thinks. And it's not that I don't care about how you feel. It's not that I, you know, don't care about how I make you feel, but it's that I do not care about your judgments of me and what you think. Because if you're not in agreement with the Most High God, then you're wrong. Okay, so we are going to pray and then I am going to get into this. I'm going to be reading from 1 Samuel. And this is also just, I, I really love this book because I love the story of King David because I see, I, I see so many similarities with his heart and my own heart, and a lot of the people who are drawn even to watch me, it's like, we are men and women after God's own heart. Okay, so Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just praise you and I thank you for this day. Lord, I want to praise you and thank you right now for all of the trials and the tribulations and the hardships and this excruciating long wilderness. I know I've done a lot of complaining about it, and I am sorry for that. I want to praise you and thank you because you have worked so much out of me during this time, and you have shown me so much. And you have sharpened me and made me into, made me into a weapon against the enemy's kingdom, and I am so grateful for that. But I never want to be a weapon that is formed against another brother or sister in Christ because I know all too well how that feels. And so I thank you, Lord, for the people that are watching me today that have that desire as well. I thank you for helping us, God, to be weapons 
against the enemy's kingdom and not against our brothers or sisters in Christ and definitely not against those who are lost, those who are searching, those who might be in the depths of Satanism or witchcraft or New Age or addiction or whatever, whatever. Let us show them your love. Let us not be weapons that are formed against your kingdom. Because God, I know that you will hold those who claim to be Christians much more accountable than those who do not know you. In Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, I praise you and I thank you for each and every person that you bring to my channel. I ask that you would bless them. I ask that you would meet each and every one where they are at. God, I ask that you would speak to them. I ask that you would give them wisdom and um, let them feel your love. And Father, I just thank you for your presence. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just get a hold of my words. And that this would glorify you and bless each and every one who comes to this channel. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Okay. So, as I was saying before, we all have those people in our life that you can't express emotion around. You might have people in your life where you're always expected to have a smile on your face. You're always expected to be joyful and contributing in some way. And you can't express emotions like frustration or annoyance or any of that without being judged or criticized or condemned because we have been so programmed to believe that keeping up appearances is something to be valued when I think that there is a time and a place where, yeah, I maybe shouldn't, you know, lose my, you know, mind. It, it, like in front of a large group of people or, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's a terrible example. By the same token. N no, nobody ever gets to the root of anything. If they can't be real and they can't be honest, things don't get solved by keeping up appearances. Amen? Okay. So, and this is something that I absolutely love about King David. And so I'm going to read this scripture to you guys tonight because it is... I want to be more undignified than this for Jesus and not care what anybody thinks because my purpose on this earth is to lead people into his kingdom is to love because those are the two greatest commandments to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. And you can't do the second without the first. People think that they can. But I promise you, you cannot agape love someone without God. All right, so let's begin with this. This is, now, if you guys have, you know, watched me the last couple of videos, um, I was telling you, I think this was um, in the one called Messing with the Ark. I was talking to you guys about Uzzah 
and how he touched the ark. God struck him dead for touching the ark. And then David got mad at God and was like, <sighs> That wasn't cool, God. And then um, he left the ark. You know, he got like, I don't even want to mess with it now. And so then it went to the house of Obed-Edom, which is interesting because I'm pretty sure that, yeah, Obed-Edom was a Gittite. And if I'm not mistaken, all the ites in the Bible were like, had that Nephilim bloodline. And, and the Ark blessed Obed-Edom. So to me, it says that Obed-Edom had a pure heart. Even though he, his bloodline might not have been pure, his heart was. Okay, so I'm just kind of getting you guys caught up on where we're at here because I'm not going to read all of this to you, but I'm going to start in verse 12. So now King David was told, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with rejoicing and gladness. And when those who were carrying the ark of the Lord by its poles had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. And David was dancing before the Lord with great enthusiasm. And David was wearing a linen ephod, a priest's upper garment. So David and all of the house of Israel were bringing the ark of the Lord up to the city of David with shouts of joy and with the sound of the trumpet. I mean, so he's just celebrating. Here's the ark of the covenant, you guys. Yay. And he's dancing around, you know, just having a good old time. Then as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, who was David's wife. Okay. So King Saul's daughter, Michelle, looked down from the window above and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she felt contempt for him in her heart because she thought him undignified. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent which David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed to all the people the entire multitude of Israel, both to men and women, to each a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, that sounds weird. Praise the Lord. A cake of day. <laughs> like a fruit cake. <laughs> Here, have a fruit cake. Okay. And a cake. I just want to send somebody a fruit cake <laughs> one of these times and just be like, I was thinking of you. Okay. <laughs> then all the people departed, each to his house. Then David returned to bless his household, but his wife Michelle, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, how glorious and distinguished was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself and stripped off his kingly robes in the eyes of his servants, maids like one of the riffraff who shamelessly uncovers himself. So basically, she comes along and lays a guilt trip on King David because he looked undignified in front of these maids, and these servants. Okay? So David said to Michelle, it was before the Lord that I did this, who chose me above your father and all his house to appoint me as a ruler over Israel, the people of the Lord. Therefore, I will celebrate in pure enjoyment before the Lord. Yet, I will demean myself even more than this and will be humbled in my own sight and yours as I please. But by the maids whom you mentioned, 
By them I shall be held in honor. I mean, he told her, didn't he, you guys? I mean, he did. He was real with her. He was real with her. Like, I will become more undignified than this before the Lord. And those maids and those servants, they'll think I'm awesome. I, will, I don't care. I will humble myself. I will make myself look stupid if that's what it takes. Okay. And now, this was God's response. And the Bible doesn't say that this was God's response, but it's obvious that this was God's response. This is the last verse. Michelle, the daughter of Saul, had no child to the day of her death. Because God had David's back. Because David didn't care if he was undignified before the maids and the servants. He let his joy, his dancing before the Lord be seen by all because he wanted the people to know, I've got the Ark of the Covenant. You guys, this is, this is a reason to celebrate. And so I want to encourage you today. Don't be afraid to be yourself and to have emotions. Don't be afraid of those emotions. Now, if you, you know, are given to bouts of rage, bad emotions, that's something to obviously work on with the Lord and be honest with yourself and him about. And trust me, I am not 100% there yet myself. But I'm not afraid to be myself around anybody. Because I want you to know how passionately I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to know how passionately you are loved by the Lord Jesus Christ, by the Father in heaven, by the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name. All right, guys. I hope that this blessed you today. I know it certainly did me. And I, as always, I love you. God bless you, and I will see you in the next video.